Hi, in this video, I'm going to talk to you about the five do's and don'ts of climbing for beginners. Let's do this. Hi, I'm Gordon, Fatal Climber. On this channel, I'm recording my climbing journey. But in this video, I want to go through my top five do's and don'ts that beginners should keep in mind. I've got five of each and I'll have one at the end, which is a special bonus one, which I think secretly is the most important one. So let's get straight into it. Let's start with the don'ts first. So when you start out, don't be obsessed with grade. Grades are an important measure of progress, how you're getting on. They're good to keep an eye on, but when you start out, they can become an obsession. They're also very subjective, particularly in indoor bouldering. A V3 for one person might be a V4 for a, another or even a V2. And also, you might think a V3 in an overhang is easy, whereas a V3 in a slab is particularly difficult. So while they're a good indicator of progress, don't obsess about them beginning and certainly don't use what grade you're climbing as an indication of how well you're climbing them. Next, don't compare yourself to others. As you climb with other people, there'll be people you see that for one reason or another, you'll think you should be as good as or better as. Could be anything, could be to do with how long they've been climbing, could be to do with how strong you are compared to them. But comparing how well you're doing to them will drive you nuts. Based on what we talked about in terms of grades, they might find slabs particularly easy, so they can do a slab and you can't do it. If you're going to compare yourself to anyone, compare yourself to previous you. Look at progress, look back to how you used to climb and compare yourself to that. Uh, a far better indicator of, of development is seeing that you're climbing better now than you were last week, last month, last year. So don't compare yourself to others. Unless you want to lose your mind or be unhappy. If you're finding this interesting or you think it'd be useful and you're not subscribed, then consider subscribing. It really helps the channel out. Next, don't take risks. When you start out, you won't necessarily be aware of what you can and can't do. You won't know moves you can make. Um, and when you start out, your risk of injury is a lot greater um, than as you, as you grow. Don't throw yourself at moves because you're not scared to fall, because uncontrolled falling is normally what causes a problem. So try hard, build your skills, um, take moves, but just don't take totally pointless risks, particularly high up a wall. Concentrate instead on controlled movements at the beginning. And as your skill develops and you get to know what your body can and can't do, you can increase the amount of risks you're taking. Don't avoid working on things you can't do. A really common thing for climbers to do is to concentrate on climbing the things they can you go on a session where all you're interested in doing is, is, is not easy climbs, but climbs you get the satisfaction of getting to the top. But it's not necessarily good for development. The excellent Dave McLeod in his book, Eight Out of Ten Climbers Make These Mistakes, or is it nine, recommends that you should have sessions where 80% of your time is spent on climbs you can't do or moves you can't do. And when you're working on them, what you're developing is the skill or the strength or the technique that will allow you to do those moves or do those climbs in the future. What you'll find if you spend some of your sessions spending most of the time on things you can't do, you'll develop a lot quicker. So don't avoid working on the things you can't do. Don't be afraid of falling. Falling is part of climbing, really, if you're pushing it. Um, as long as you're not taking unnecessary risks. What you want to be doing is getting more and more comfortable with coming off the wall. What I always recommend to people who are new or people who are beginners is climb up a bit, jump off, climb up a bit higher, jump off. Um, you want to get used to that sensation of coming off, but spend some time learning how to fall. Now, I'm not an expert in falling, but what I, I do know is when you're landing, you want to have your center of gravity behind your feet. That way you'll roll back. So practice it, learn how to do it properly, but don't be afraid of falling. It will inhibit your enjoyment of the sport. So now on to the do's. Particularly when you start out, take it easy. 
don't go mad. Don't go into a climbing session and gung-ho, throw yourself up walls. Don't climb every day. Um, depending on how fit you are, maybe once a week is enough. A lot of people, when they start out, they'll just climb too often and very quickly end up with aches and pains and tweaks and injuries. If you're going to climb more often, then make sure you don't climb for too long. The recommendation really is sh more frequent, shorter sessions are better than really, really intense long sessions. But just don't overdo it. Start off lightly, build your strength up. As you build your strength up, you'll be able to come more frequently and you'll get more enjoyment out of the sport. Do use your legs. A common problem with people starting out climbing is they think it's about dragging yourself up, pulling yourself up the wall. Your legs are significantly stronger than your upper body for most people. So use your legs as much as possible. Think of climbing as bringing your feet up and standing up. Stand up, move your hands, bring your feet up, stand up, move your hands. Now that's not always going to work. There are climbs that do require upper body strength. There are climbs that do require you to pull yourself up, but use your legs as much as possible. That's where the strength is. As I go through this, have I missed anything? Let me know in the comments what you think I've forgotten. Or if you have any views on the things I've said, let me know. Find people to climb with. A lot of people when they start out, they maybe wander about on their own. Some people don't mind climbing on their own, but you're not picking up any technique and you might be climbing too much in a, in a session. By finding people to climb, you get that social aspect of climbing, which is what makes it great. Find people to climb with, particularly people that are better than you. You'll learn a lot more, a lot quicker by watching people you're climbing with. So speak to your local gym if you're new to it. Ask them if there's any groups. Um, try meet up. Um, Meetup is a good organisation for finding a group in your area, but, but speak to your gym, they'll help you out. This one, as far as I'm concerned, is one of the most important ones. Do focus on learning technique. Far too many people, it's all about, can I get up this climb? Far too many, particularly men, it's about, can I use my upper body strength to pull myself up the wall? What you want to be developing as much as possible is technique, proper technique, will not only serve you now, but as you progress, as you come into more difficult climbs, you'll need the proper technique to be able to get up the harder climbs. So again, if you're climbing with other people, learn technique from them. Don't make this all about, can I get to the top of this wall? If you send a climb, then try and do it better. Try and work on using more technique. I cannot stress enough the importance of learning and practicing proper technique. Lastly in the do's, enjoy yourself remember this is meant to be fun yes it's a sport yes in my view it's probably the best workout you'll get it's far better than a gym session as far as i'm concerned but it's meant to be fun so remember that when you're not achieving the climb you want remember failure is part of climbing remember falling is part of climbing the only way you'll progress is if you push through failure but try to enjoy yourself when you're doing it. If you find yourself not enjoying it, stop, think, what am I doing? What is it I need to change so that I can get back to enjoying this wonderful pastime, which is climbing. And as a little bonus, coffee and cake, although I'm trying to reduce the amount of cake I partake in. Support your local climbing center's cafe by buying coffees and teas and hot chocolates, particularly if you're climbing with friends. The social aspect, the pre-climbing coffee, is a wonderful part. I think probably one of the most important things to remember to do. So that's it. Hopefully these do's and don'ts have been useful. If you've learned anything, let me know. If there's anything I've forgotten, let me know. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.